I'm really interested in looking at the connections between population reproductive health and questions of food security, particularly because in my own scanning of analyses of food security and projections of future food security, there did seem to be a pretty uh, exclusive focus on a single path of population growth. And I felt that uh, by only looking at one path of future population growth and accepting that as destiny, uh, policymakers and program managers who are concerned with food security and thinking of strategies for food security would be missing major opportunities uh, in the realm of reproductive health and family planning that could have significant implications for future food demand and for food security outcomes. And by drawing the connections between population growth, reproductive health, um, and food needs, we are better able to broaden the opportunities for the, the range of interventions that could be undertaken uh, in a more comprehensive way to assure sustainability and food security and capacity for adapt adaptation to climate change in the future. The connections between population growth, climate change, and food security became incredibly evident to me on a recent trip to Malawi. Malawi is a country of about 15 million people, and 85% of Malawi's population is employed in the agricultural sector. And the vast majority of those are subsistence farmers who are reliant on rain-fed agriculture. So with a changing climate, with increasing temperatures, with shifting rainfall patterns, this is having a, a significant effect on agricultural productivity in Malawi um, that farmers are already experiencing. And what studies indicate is that in the future, uh, agricultural productivity in Malawi will be significantly affected uh, by climate change. Uh, the estimation for maize productivity, for example, in Malawi is that by 2030, uh, the productivity of maize will decline by fully 20 percent in that region. Uh, so this is something that presents tremendous food security challenges in a country that is already feeling the effects of food insecurity. Uh, one in five children in Malawi is currently undernourished. So when you think about the kinds of climate changes that are affecting agricultural production in Malawi, um, as well as the population growth in Malawi, uh, it raises a lot of concerns for the future of food security uh, for the population in Malawi. Uh, as I said, Malawi's population is currently 15 million. UN projections for Malawi's population by 2050 indicate that that 15 million will grow to somewhere between 45 and 55 million by 2050. And certainly where Malawi ends up in that range of projections for the future will have significant implications for the extent to which Malawi is going to be able to be a food secure country. Now certainly agricultural developments, trade, um, climate change adaptation assistance, all of these things will also play into uh, food security concerns for Malawi in the future, but also the rising demand that comes from population growth will be a significant factor. Um, one of the exciting new studies that has been undertaken was a model that was developed by the Futures Group that combines a population model with a food needs model and a climate change model to be able to look at each of these uh, issues independently and understand how they play together, how they can interact and play out together in the future. Um, when this model was uh, put into place in Ethiopia, for example, researchers found that a slower population growth path um, was something that would make up for the uh, caloric shortfall that will be a result of climate change impa impacts on agriculture in Ethiopia. Um, and they also found that the slower population growth path would cut the number of undernourished children in half. Um, and knowing that that slower population growth path can be achieved by expanding access to reproductive health and voluntary family planning services for women in Ethiopia is an incredibly powerful piece of information. Um, and the extent to which that information can get into the hands of policymakers and program managers who are thinking about food security needs in the future for Ethiopia, that can be a very powerful piece of information and hopefully results in improved programs on the ground. Yeah. 
These positive examples speak to the ways in which population and reproductive health considerations can be incorporated into strategies to address future food security, into strategies to address climate adaptation needs uh, in ways that will build the resilience of women and build the resilience of communities around the globe. Uh, programs like the U.S. Agency for International Development's Feed the Future program, uh, national adaptation plans that are supported through the U.N. process, these are examples of programs that could be integrating population considerations and reproductive health needs.